Hi everyone, so finishing off some of the projects from Herbology bathroom setup, I wanted to make some eco-friendly do-it-yourself toilet bombs um, just for cleaning. I'm just trying to cut down on the amount of chemicals I'm using and a lot of what I'm using for cleaning nowadays is a lot of the whole bicarb soda and vinegar mixes. I have taken your advice. I have gotten some of these water slide paper. So we're gonna try that on this using the flesh eating slug repellent label that we've made previously. So with that, so to make this, we're gonna grab half a cup of bicarb soda, half a cup of citric acid, and half a cup of cornstarch. We're gonna give that a really good mix. Then we're gonna drop in 30 drops of whatever essential oils you want, um, but you will want ones that are more of a cleaning one. So I've used a mix of tea tree, eucalyptus, and lemon. So I'm gonna drop those in. I'm gonna give it a really good stir just so that's all broken down and mixed through. What I didn't realize last time, some people suggest doing distilled water, or you can just boil some water, let it cool down, and use that. So all up, it's probably a few teaspoons worth of water, but either you're gonna spritz that, or in my case, I'm just sprinkling it with my hand and mixing until you can make a condensed ball of your mixture. All right, so I know I can make a ball with this stuff, so now I'm just going to choose a mold. Now you can do these as blocks or you can do them as balls, um, but because it is for Herbology, I actually thought I was gonna jump into some of my chocolate molds. I never seem to use them, so I thought I better use them for this project. I, is this the one? Yes. I decided I'm going to use Wilton's Cookie Candy Mold. I thought these were really cute. As you can see, I still have the label on, so I haven't even used these. I bought them uh, winners, gosh knows how many years ago, so it's been sitting here. But because they've got the skulls and the spider webs, I thought that might be kind of sweet. And that way, when we press these in, they are going to be like little tablets. So, let's grab that. I'm going to take a little bit. And... Press that in. Okay, so that makes up two, four, six, eight, ten, and a little bit. So we're gonna set those aside to dry. So that should take, I think, about 24 hours to dry from memory. Um, in the meantime, we're gonna quickly use these and transfer. So we, at least we've got a nice little jar. I just grabbed this one from Kmart. Um, Instructions. Oh good, here we go. I actually haven't heard of these before and I don't know how it works. So, oh, here we go. <clears throat> All right, I wanna read this out and I'm just gonna overlay as I'm doing this. On our computer, we are going to print our image, not mirrored, onto the glossy side of this paper. Then we're going to spray a thin coat of acrylic varnish evenly over the printed area. We need to spray it a meter away and we have to make sure the image is completely covered so the varnish protects it. We have to let that dry completely. So either we're going to let that set aside for an hour or we can use a hair dryer to make it dry a little bit faster. And we're gonna know it's ready because it's gonna be dry and smooth to touch. We're going to cut out our image. Um, I am using a white paper one so I need to make sure I don't leave any edges because it will show white. We're gonna soak that in water, leaving it for 30 seconds. Now it's cold weather, so it's advising that I use warm water at the moment. We also wanna pop some water onto the glass jar. That way the image is going to easily move around so I can get the spot correct that I want to put it. So you're gonna take out the decal from the water, which will have been sitting there for about 30 seconds. Apparently the backing will come off easily, but you don't wanna actually remove it just yet. How does this work? Okay, so we're going to take the decal out, press against the project face up, and remove the backing paper. So we're gonna gently remove the backing so the film sits on the surface. Then we're going to take a squeegee of some sort, I guess just to really make sure it's pressed in there and stuck on. And then you're going to let it dry for three or four hours. Or if it's cold weather like it is right now, we can also use a hair dryer. All right, so we are going to let that dry. I've got my little toilet bombs drying outside in the sun. It's still gonna take probably about 24 hours before I can put this all together. Now, to use the toilet bombs, you are going to just 
grab one, toss it in the toilet, it's going to fizz. So personally, once a week when I need to do a deep clean, I tend to keep some white vinegar nearby as well. And I just pour a little bit in the toilet while it's doing that. You're gonna grab your toilet brush and just give it a little bit of a scrub once it's finished fizzing. And then you're gonna flush and that should be completely clean. You can use these toilet bombs through the week as well just to kind of maintain keeping that toilet clean. As you saw, they're really easy to make, they're cheap to make, and they're good for the environment. So there's no problem using them on a pretty regular basis. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed that and I will see you guys in the next video.